So I was looking through my comments the other day and I saw that someone posted something to the effect of, I'm 100% committed to losing weight this time. I'll pay you $20 if you make a video about this keto diet that you do in more detail. Like take me through a day or a couple of days or something uh, of your diet. So I figured challenge accepted, challenge accepted. Uh, this might be the last keto video that I do. But uh, yeah, so let's go through a few days of what I eat and uh, any kind of tips that I have and stuff like that because yeah the keto diet really sort of it did change my life you know I lost a, a lot of weight anyway enough wasting time let's get into the video a quick pro tip for people who are starting the diet is just give it time give it time because like it's a major change for your body you are going from being fueled by carbs being fueled by sugars to kind of fueling yourself with fats, you know, and just, and protein. Like those are your main kind of source of energy, especially fats. Uh, it's a big change for your body and it's sort of traumatic at the beginning. Like you will feel really, really weak. You will feel kind of grumpy. You'll feel, it's sort of like when you quit drinking coffee or you quit smoking cigarettes or whatever. Like you, it's an addiction, especially sugar, because you'll have no sodas. You'll have no uh, candies, no just no sugar of any sort. It's tough. No fruit and no rice, no bread, none of that. And it's, that makes up a huge part of your diet. So when you start, you'll feel awful for the first week. And uh, the second week, you will feel a lot of cravings for this or for that. And breaking your old routine of going to like, you know, convenience stores and things like that. Like breaking that routine is really tough. So I recommend for people who are starting keto, do it on a vacation, do it on a holiday. That's when you just start because you can focus more on cooking. You can focus more on creating a new routine. That's definitely a big thing that I recommend starting with. Now, these are just a few things that I have here. Very, very few things. So for example, we have a couple of types of oil, like we have olive oil and we've got coconut oil, both easily uh, purchasable in China as well as butter. So these are things that you want to be cooking with. So if you're cooking something, cook with one of these three things or maybe if you've got bacon grease laying around, cook in that. That's the way to go. Now in terms of meats, basically uh, in keto you're going to become a sausage connoisseur. You're going to be like figuring out what kind of sausages you like because like sausage is a great keto meat. One, sausages are really tasty, they're great, and then two, they tend to have more fat than protein, which is ideal for keto, and three, usually the carb content is really low, if not zero. So definitely get some sausages, they will be one of your staple meats. And then the other staple meat for me, of course, is steak. So I like buying steak, so I go to a wholesale uh, market and I buy these. I think this comes out to like 40 yuan each, but if you were to get this at a restaurant, like it would be like 200 kwai or more. So you save a lot buying wholesale. And the other thing is cheese. This is the other thing that you're going to want to have. Uh, so I bought like a like a seven pound block of cheese, uh, Gouda cheese specifically, and I'm going with that. Oh, I forgot about these. Olives. Yes, you got to have some olives. Olives will really help. You can eat as many olives as you want on uh, the keto diet. It's, um, I, I love them. Green olives, black olives, whatever. They're great. Something that I like to do whenever I uh, need some extra vitamins and minerals and uh, just an extra source of healthy fats, especially if I want to snack, I would recommend not snacking on the keto diet, but if you have to, especially in the beginning, you'll feel really, really hungry all the time is get nuts and seeds and stuff like that. And this place right here, Liangping Putza, if you're in China, this is a great brand. There's another one called uh, Sanjur Songshu, which is three squirrels. Um, that's the translation of it. Three squirrels, like these places, sell a lot of nuts, they sell a lot of seeds and stuff like that. So I'm gonna go in here and get a couple. All right, so right here, we've got some things like pistachios. They tend to be pretty carby, but like pine nuts, are really good. They are rather expensive. Um, but yeah, pine nuts are really good. So I'm gonna go with that. Um, so, you know, everything is 
kind of buy 100 grams here in China. So well, let's see, what is this for carbs? It's 10.3 carbs per 100 grams, which is not bad. So we're going to go with that. Macadamia nuts are good as well. Uh, almonds are fantastic. Uh, so I'm going to grab some almonds. And then um, there are some seeds that I really like right here. Let's see. They're very, very cheap, and they're perfect for this diet. So by guaza, I'm not really sure what these are. Ah, oh, shit, 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 shit. Okay, so yeah, these three are really good, and um, I might take a look at watermelon seeds and some others, but I think that's about where I'm going to stop. But see, this place is great, because they have, you know, just all sorts of dried goods, um, and you could just take a look at the packaging, look at the carb content, the fat content, and stuff like that, but I tend to go with nuts and seeds because they have um, a lot of healthy fats in them along with other great nutrition. What am I trying to say? Just other great like vitamins and minerals in them. So yeah, definitely check out this store. So let's talk about the daily routine. What do I eat from meal to meal? So let's break it down, breakfast, lunch, dinner, stuff like that. I'll take you through a few example meals that, um, that, I've, that I just have as part of my daily routine. So let's do it. Breakfast is the easiest. Coffee. That's all. Black coffee. And I do this because I find that keto goes really, really well with intermittent fasting. So intermittent fasting, if you don't know, is uh, it's also called 16-8. It's just a way to break down your day by um, into two parts. There's one part where you take in calories, you consume calories, and then the other part is when you don't. So you take eight hours a day. Those you know, those hours are the times in which you take in calories. So for me, at 12 p.m. to 8 p.m., that eight-hour stretch, that's where I consume my calories. I don't have breakfast and I don't eat late at night. So those eight hours, I'm taking in calories, and then the other 16 hours of the day, I'm fasting. So I have twice as much time fasting as I do eating. And even, like, having sodas, of course, or having other drinks, like no calories, no calories in those 16 hours that I'm fasting. Um, now you can actually drink black coffee during a fast and you're fine. It doesn't break your fast. So that's what I do. So I wake up, have a little coffee, you know, at about nine o'clock or so. And then that's my breakfast. And then I move on to lunch. Let's talk about lunch. Lunch could be just about anything, but like, for example, this particular meal, it's sausage, it's olives, it's bacon, and eggs, with little chives on top. You can also throw in a little bit of cheese, for example, and uh, it's just, that's a perfect keto, like, breakfast slash lunch, because it's a lot of fat, it's a lot of protein, uh, and it's good stuff. It's kind of, you know, it's meat heavy, and that's good, but like, because most of your your macros are going to be concentrated towards fats and proteins and these particular types of meats like these sausages and these and this kind of bacon is is more fat than protein fantastic i want a little bit more fat so i've added olives to it and that's it there's a couple of carbs in the eggs but that doesn't really matter it doesn't really matter so i was a bit lazy tonight and i got some delivery so this is just a uh, subway salad right here so it's got a little bit of bacon it's got salami uh, and ham in here or pepperoni and ham and for extra fat I've got some uh, like guacamole and like guacamole doesn't really belong in this salad but you know oh well and then um, I do have onions but uh, my macros have been good today so I can actually fit the onions in even though onions are usually carby I've got some um, green peppers here and some olives. I'm probably going to add some more olives just because I like olives and I got them in the fridge. So yeah, there's dinner. And here we've got rabbit with lots and lots of different kinds of peppers and some ginger. That's all that's in there. So a lot of protein, not much fat. So what I can do is eat that 100% dark chocolate or some nuts or some seeds, something like that. That'll work. And I don't think I talked about the 100% dark chocolate, actually. It's fantastic for keto because it's full of healthy fats, lots of fats. It's got um, so many health benefits, dark chocolate does. So please check that out. And um, like if you look down here, the, the fat 
to protein ratio is crazy. So 55 grams of fat to 13 grams of protein is great. Now, it is carby, so every 100 grams, 15 grams of fat. So you've got to be careful with how much you're eating of this. I try to stay at about you know 10 to 20 carbs per day. So if I have dark chocolate, if I have uh, any dark chocolate that day, that's going to pretty much be my carbs or most of my carbs for the day. It's pretty bitter, yeah, but it's it's nice. This is one of my favorite dishes right here. I love tomato and eggs. This is the best. Yes, they go perfectly well together. You see tomatoes and eggs mixed together like in America in different capacities, but this is all it is. Just tomato and eggs, a little bit of garlic because I happen to like garlic, but boy, it's fantastic. And you might think these are this is like little mushrooms or something like that, but it's actually like bamboo. Like they call it baby bamboo, and you mix that with some chicken and some spices, and it's awesome. It's awesome. A lot of fiber and uh, a lot of goodness. So there you go. So we've got another lunch here. We've got shuiju nyoro, which is like water boiled beef. So we got slices of beef here. Bunch of garlic on top, but it's mostly for flavor because you don't want to eat too much garlic when you're on keto. Um, but yeah, so you just kind of stir it up. And uh, we've got some uh, veggies right here. Like this is a uh, Napa cabbage. Um, and uh, yeah, so it's basically just beef with some some onions and, uh, and spices and all that kind of stuff. So just look at it. It's beautiful. So yeah, that's lunch. So I noticed I've been posting a lot of like meat heavy stuff. I haven't talked a lot about the vegetables. So let's actually go through the vegetable market and figure out what vegetables are good for keto. We'll just kind of start right here, I guess. Like the rule of thumb is that basically if it grows above ground and is green, you're good to go. You're good to go. So like with things like onions, green onions or leeks, you do have to be careful. Uh, cabbage is of course good to go. Celery is amazing. Uh, so spinach is one of the best, um, one of the best vegetables for the keto diet. Peppers are all good. I would not say eat many bell peppers because they have natural sugars inside them. Cucumbers, fantastic. Eat as many as you want. Uh, eggplant, you can eat. Uh, eggplant, yeah, right there. Like just any like leafy green vegetable is good. Um, yeah, this is called Kong Chin Tsai. This is a Sichuan thing. It might be in a couple other places, but yeah, uh, tomatoes, I would say be careful with. Be careful with tomatoes because tomatoes are technically a fruit, you know, and uh, you gotta, you know, cut out fruit on the keto diet. So that kind of sucks, but you know, you, you can have tomatoes, just be careful with them. Just be careful with them. And uh, here we've got a bunch of mushrooms. So basically any sort of mushroom is okay in moderation. Like most things are okay in moderation. Yeah, there you go. You've got little bok choy. You've got some, I mean, there's some things I don't even know what they are. Like this here. No, I don't even know what that is. You've got a couple of types of lettuce right here. Carrots you can't have, unfortunately. This is called bitter melon. And it's really, really good for keto. But boy, it tastes awful. It's not called bitter melon because it's green. Uh, cilantro, of course, is all fine. Corn, no corn. Unfortunately, don't don't do it. It's sweet um, and it's it's carby. Uh, just this type of cabbage right here. Had this the other day. No onions, no tomatoes, or a few onions, not much. Like you can have maybe half an onion, um, but be careful with the carb count. So it's really not so bad. Like the keto diet is not so bad. You can eat most things. Most things you can have. Like, oh, these are two of my staples. I eat these all the time. Cauliflower and broccoli along with this. They're just staples for me. I, I love them. Like, yeah, keto's not that bad. You can have most vegetables. Like, so many people focus on what you can't eat, right? Everyone freaks out about, like, things I'm not allowed to have on keto. I'm not allowed to have this. I'm not allowed to have this. But actually, 
it's not that restrictive of a diet once you kind of actually sit down and think about what the whole thing entails. It's just meat and vegetables. Like, that's not a difficult diet. Just eat meat and most vegetables. Not, not so bad. Now let's talk about eating out. Like if you're out and you don't know what to eat, what to do for food, uh, something you can do, especially like for dinner or like if you decide to break intermittent fasting and want to eat late at night, is barbecue. Barbecue is fantastic. So you can go to a place like this, like these, these kind of Xinjiang places, um, minority kind of barbecue places, and you can just sit here by the side of the road and eat something. And it's just meat. It's just meat. They do have some vegetables, uh, roast garlic. Don't eat that. It's a bit too carby. But then you've got mushrooms, great. Mushrooms, great. Uh, mushrooms, great. Uh, peppers, like all of this stuff on the top is pretty good, except for the tofu. And of course, you've got the meat. I mean, it's got some lean meat. It's got some fatty meat. Uh, peanuts are okay as well. Like, it's all good. Stay away from the beer. But barbecue is a good option. And I remember one of my subscribers saying, like, keto is hard? No, it's not. It's called the lamb kebab diet. And, yeah, that's that's it. You can do that. Another meal that I had while I was out the other day was tandoori chicken at the local Indian place. So when you go to a restaurant, anything with meat in it, you're fine. Focus on the meat. It's easier. Now, something that you just cannot get around the first couple of months on keto is research. You have to go out and look at how many carbs are in this, how many carbs are in this, what are net carbs, what are total carbs. You have to look up so many different things and learn to count your carbs. It, you cannot get around it. I don't count calories on this diet, but I do count carbs, and I'll tell you why later. Something you're going to have to do is track your meals, track what you're eating. You have to know what you're putting in your face. It's really important. So I suggest using a, a diet called Keto Tracker, or you can just type in like Keto Tracker into Google Play or Keto Diet into Google Play or whatever app store you use, and you'll see lots of different options for this sort of thing. You have to keep track of what you're putting into your body. It'll spit out your calories and your macros, all the different percentages and things like that. Why don't I count calories? Well, because it's something that naturally happens. When you eat sort of the same foods over and over and over again, there's this thing that happens called food habituation. Whenever you kind of get used to certain foods, you've eaten them so many times, you just kind of naturally take in less and less calories because you eat less and less of those foods. You're not excited by them anymore. You're kind of over them. So that's sort of what happened to me. I don't really care about food as much as I used to. I just don't. I'm not like a food guy anymore unless I get off keto. Then I go totally nuts. But while I'm on keto... Eh, like food is just fuel. I don't care about it so much. Worry about what time of the day it is. Worry about how many carbs are in it. And then that's it. As far as like exercise goes, I didn't really do a lot of exercise. I just didn't because I like I physically couldn't in the beginning. Like after I lost 40 or 50 pounds, I started like cycling a lot more. I started like riding my bike. Like I would pretty much exclusively ride my bike to get to wherever I was going. Wouldn't take any other form of transport. And, uh, you know, maybe once a week or once every two weeks, I would play soccer with a couple of friends, football. That's about all that I did. And that's about all that I do. Uh, I ride the bike. I don't do a lot of exercise now, like even less than I did before. Uh, I'm about, uh, I'm 187. I actually just weighed myself today. Um, I was 277, 277 pounds. Now I'm 187, so 90 pounds down overall. And uh, yeah, I'm looking to get down to about 175 or so. Uh, and I think that'll be about where I maintain. And that's about it. I don't have a whole lot left to say. We've gone through like the meals. We've gone through snacks. We've gone through my exercise. We've gone through what, you know, a few things that you can eat and you can't eat. We've gone through this. Th we've gone through so many different things. So I hope that this was helpful to you guys out there. Um, and that is it. Challenge accepted and challenge completed. Bam, there it is. PayPal me, there it is. Or uh, you can check me out on Patreon as well. Uh, please check out my Instagram. I'm trying to get more followers on my Instagram. Let's get going. I love my Instagram. I think it's great. 
Um, I'm not posting a ton at the moment, but I do love what I post. This is such a great, simple little platform. Uh, not getting in on the TikToks. No, thank you. No, thank you. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. Uh, again, thank you all very much for watching. And I'll see you all next time.